We have Jesse James training with the real She-Hulk. I don't know her name. We're gonna watch this video and Jesse James got a mad reach. So we're gonna watch this video and go over some things that you can do. Actually, I'm gonna make the workouts, the exercises better for you. Okay, so we got this like... After this, can I get my half my head shaved? Okay, we won't spend too, too much time on their ladder raises. All right, so I know this is a lat puller machine, but remember when we're doing any type of back movement, whether you're rowing a high row, a low row, a mid row, whatever row, the part of the rep that's gonna get the most amount of muscle recruitment or like growth is gonna be when it's under a load and stretch. And it's to do with one hand. It's when it's here like stretching, right? And then we're pulling down and then going on the way up. This like the contraction, the positive is important, but on the way up, slowly getting this lat to basically get to all the way to here and be lengthened under a load. It's where you get in the most amount of muscle recruitment, this stretch right here. So like doing this, like when your reps are like this, you're not, you're getting reps in, but you're just missing the mark. Just think of like anytime you're doing a lat pull down, you're just doing a pull up. And the place we're gonna get, the place, the part of the rep is we're gonna get the most amount of muscle recruitment is going to be basically when you're hanging here, right? So being here is where we're gonna get the most amount of muscle recruitment in the rep. So when you're doing a pull up or pull down, whatever, and then on the way down, that muscle going from shortened to lengthened, then under a load, here's where you're getting the most amount of muscle recruitment. So if your reps are like E and you're only spending minimal time here, even if you get like a bunch of reps, think of it, think of it as the amount of time you're spending under a load in that position as well too, not just how many reps you're doing and getting to that range of motion. So there's a difference between doing this or doing this. I'm spending more time in that range, we're gonna get the most amount muscle recruitment. So when you're doing any row, all rows, all back movements, if you want your back to start progressing more and more efficiently, make sure that we spend some time in that stretched position. Whether it's here, here, here. What are you, what are you, what are you trying to already show me up, up for? Right? All right, all right. Oh, we're, uh, we're moving on. I kind of wasn't feeling it, so then we just switch it up. That's some muscle right there. How big are your arms? I don't, I don't need it. This is obviously the way this woman's training. It's her style, it's her thing. How she got there is how she got there. Again, I'm gonna show you guys how to do that movement that much more optimal. So again, they're kind of missing the mark. Even the, even the girl that's jacked can benefit because I always look at what's actually required for you to build muscle. So I'm gonna do exactly what's required to build muscle. So if I don't have to load the bar, load the machine, load the pin, whatever, more than I need to, or intensify the set more than I need to, I'm not going to, right? Because in the end, it's gonna be your body's ability to recover from how much you put in trauma, depending on how intense or how much you intensify your set through. It could be just your technique, your weight, your rep schemes and whatnot. Anyway, so we have this like, and I like doing these. I like doing bicep curls with the, you know, low pulley bicep curls, you know, grabbing the ball, huh, pause. Anyway, so we have her, she's like a very like, she loves using this, this part of her arm, like her traps, right? When she's pulling, she's kind of doing this, right? And she's getting weight and she's, and she probably feels the weight a lot doing this. She probably does, right? But for those who are trying to really work this and Jesse starts doing it, now he's kind of in a better position. He's kind of doing this, but again, we're stopping right here. This is actually a great position to be in if we're doing bicep curls with the low pulley. This is actually really good here because we're getting a crazy stretch at the bottom and this is what you really want. Being in this position here, instead of hucking the weight and doing this, if we keep ourselves in a good position from this point here, having a stretch from here and then pulling the weight and squeezing from here, the load, the bicep is still in a great position, a good load here and activated. And then on the way down, controlling the rep to come the way down. And then we're getting this nice stretch from here. And even but pulling us back a little bit from here is gonna put a nasty stretch on my bicep from here. And then keeping the shoulders down and then pulling right up again, you're getting just a really good activation right there on the lat. Instead of taking away from it and doing this, and then we're kind of doing this and missing, again, like the biceps, not the traps are under a load, 
longer than the biceps are. You can think about it, right? If we're trying to target the biceps. We want the bicep to be the one under the load longest, not some other muscle group that's, you know, I don't know, but do them the way I just showed you. You look, you look, you look pretty decent. You look pretty decent too, Ooh, you know. Ooh, there you go, there you go, yeah, I can yeah, take like, it. Like your arms can be a little juicier. It's a work in progress. There you go. Ah. All right, we got a lot of a lot of the traps being used in this, right? And when it comes like when it comes to it, like she's you know she's spotting, and this is another thing too. When you have a when you have a spotting partner, your spot, your partner is to spot you, so you can maintain you know the the tempo. Now, if you want to like properly measure, however, I know, if you want to properly measure progressive overload, you're gonna to need to make sure that if you are have if you do have a spotter that you're not measuring it with the reps that your spotter's helping you with. So if you are doing say like eight to 12 reps and you only get eight on your own and then your help, your spotter, your boy, your girl, whatever, spots you two more reps, your progressive overload, your variable to, you know, to you know, go up or down isn't based on the 10 reps, it's based on the reps that you did. So just remember that. I used to do it too, trust me. I. It makes the most sense. When we're talking about contractions and getting the most amount of muscle or whatever, blah, 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 people think it's way more so like it's at the positive contraction, like the squeeze. Like if we're doing bench press, you wanna squeeze right here. I did the same thing. If it feels back, you wanna pull in, you squeeze there, or pulling out and squeeze in there. As good as that is, keeping the muscle in the load, that's not the place that's gonna give you the most amount of muscle recruitment or growth. It's going to elicit growth 100%. But if we want to be more efficient with our time, if we're going to pause reps, pause it in the place that's going to give us the most amount of muscle recruitment. We do a drinking game. If you're actually of age, 21 or older, because I know a lot of you guys are from the States, anytime you hear me say muscle recruitment, drink. The most amount of muscle recruitment, boom. By the time this video is done, you'd be like, you gotta be hammered, punch up in the face or something. I didn't say muscle recruitment. He said muscle. Of, you don't even know what in the video is. You're missing the mark too. Missing the mark and muscle recruitment. You got to drink. Okay, so we're doing one arm tricep pull-ons and it looks like we're doing, we're doing, it looks like we're doing a straight, it looks like we're doing a variation of a lat pull-down row with the tricep at the end. Again, she's doing exactly what she does. That's how she's been able to build her physique. She can do what she does. Do you, boo-boo. Everybody else watching this video is going to do what I'm suggesting. You don't got to listen to me. You know, you can do what she wants to do. You can do what she wants. You can do whatever you, can do whatever you want. You can do, you do, do, do you. You can do whoever you want to do. What? You copy whoever does whatever they're doing. But this is one of my favorite exercises to do for triceps. So again, we have this, like a lot of, you know, it's like far, it's far stretch and it's, it's here, right? This type of thing here is what she's doing. And she's probably got some weight on there that justifies this in a sense for her. But for you guys, again, Right, if we're, if, if this is a hybrid, you know, if this is a hybrid one arm straight arm pull down to a tricep kickback, if that's the case, we wanna be like, we don't wanna be like, like, you know, up here for like two seconds. We wanna be like, ah, and then we wanna be like, if we're, if I was gonna do this exercise right, it would look like this. That's what it'll look like. But again, if we're trying to like isolate, make sure you're just giving that muscle all the attention. We don't have to add two exercises in one. One's gonna suffer. So if this is gonna be a one arm pull down, what we want is we want this. The finished position, your elbow is pushing to the ground so your shoulders aren't doing this in the end. We have some space from here. We can be over it like this if you want to, a little bit of a hinge at the hips and we're pushing this thing down, right? We're pushing the elbow to the floor and then driving the hand like a hammer down to the back. And when we get to the ground, we're pushing down to the floor as well too, then letting the weight come up and then getting a nice stretch. Now we, we can walk a little closer and get even more of a stretch, which we really want, because we want this total complete flexion in the tricep. When the tricep is this, like this, when your arm looks like this, this is full flexion getting that full like stretch on your tricep. So from here under a load, it's stretch and then it's boom. It's shortened, then it's getting lengthened. Err, from here under load, boom from here. And that's how you want this to look. 
right? Whether you're doing it from this way or cross body like this, we make sure that shoulder doesn't pop up, up and down. It's staying down the stretch, the massive stretch on my tricep in this position, in this position, in this position, in this position. We want to have that stretch position at the end of the lift, not basically just here for a second, then up here, then it's, we're just, whoa, we're just kind of missing it. Right, we want to just stretch, squeeze, stretch like that. Don't say it like that either, but you get the point. But now we have a regular bicep curl. Four is really good, actually. Let's just watch, let's actually watch this full rep. No, I like it. You're trying to give me a little motivational talk and all this stuff. It's good. It's looking better than DC? Looking, looking, looking a little better than DC. You do it, you do it, you do it for me, do it for me. Come on. Oh my God. She took the weights right out of So yeah, so like, yeah, we got, we got just a, just a grinder here. One of those grinder trainers or people that just grind it. Uh, uh. Look at all the room we got here, guys. Just got this is my laboratory here. Just finished with a bunch of shorts. That's why we're jammed up. Anyway, so she's here, right? And this is a very common. This is very, 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 very common. I did it too. Guilty as charged. I've done it. Muscle recruitment. Ha! You got a drink. Anyway, so we want to be like I've done this thing here where we stop. A lot of people stop right here. I think it's sometimes a fear. I think people might think that if they go too low, they can hurt themselves or something like that. And it's just an easier response to stop here, especially when your hips are kind of curling it back. It's easier to get it up because if I'm, if I'm here, if my arms are behind their body for the most part, most times they are for most people. When it comes to range of motion, you can't get your hands fully extended because your hips are basically in the way. So again, what we want is this, right? If you're gonna be a slight little bit of a hinge back to give yourself some room, we want the rep to get here. Yeah, great, awesome from here. Good squeeze all the way up. And then stretching it, chest is gonna be high, then we're stretching at the bottom from here. Right here, we're gonna get a great massive stretch. And then from here, you wanna like squeeze into it, like flex into this. Don't get down here and like swing it up. Like that stretch from here, stretch from here, and then like flexing it up, that's where we're gonna get all the growth. That's gonna get all the muscle recruitment. Drink up. Who's actually drinking watching this video? If you are, must be retired or something. Or it's somewhere in Australia or the other side of the world and it could be at the diner or something. Anyway, so all the way from the bottom here, we want us to stretch from here. If you're using a dumbbell, remember the difficulty of the dumbbell or the barbell or a free weight is gonna only be up and down gravity. So like if this, this thing going up and down, right? And then putting our body in position to make it hard. So if my hands are here, up and down here, isn't as hard as it would be if I put the weight out here and now I'm doing up and down from here is a massive stretch from here. Cause not only do I have to have my body hold myself out this way, with gravity I also have to make sure that nothing comes in like this, right? So I'm getting challenged by my own body posture from here, right from the get-go and curling up. So if you're gonna do a barbell curl, easy bar curl, I suggest doing it like this. And then when it's too hard, right? You wanna get up to here, oh, uh, controlling all the way down, big stretch of the bottom, like, oh man, this sucks so bad. Then we, could do, then we could do like a mechanical breakdown and then do a drag curl and finish the rest of them like this. Elbows going back, squeeze at the bottom, up, squeeze at the bottom, up, and then. You're like, damn Johnny, I got 22 inch arms. All the way from 13 is okay. All right, moving on. Okay, so this is like the most bodybuilder way, old school bodybuilder way of doing, I don't want it to say bodybuilders, but like most people do this exactly the way she's doing them. Um, and it's just, I don't know if like she's been, you know, told to do it that way, or maybe someone's like, hey, this, there's definitely been videos that she's seen that's like, hell, the way you're doing it's not the best, but again, she's gonna do the way she wants to do. And that's the thing when it comes to training. Look, there is, there is optimal ways to do things. There is a better way to do things. There is a path that has, you know, less injury, more, you know, muscle gain and a more harmonious environment. There 100% is that option. You can pick whatever option you wanna pick. I've picked both options before. I'm in the other option where I'm like, I don't wanna be injured anymore. I want muscle still. I wanna be functional. I want that shit, so I'm gonna take that road that's gonna 
leave me down the path that has me not injured. So let me tell you what happens when you do flies that way. I'm not gonna, you get injured, <laughs> just saying. But screw being injured. Let's just talk about being efficient, all right? Because being efficient is actually, is, is the main thing when it comes to training, all this thing. We want our bodies to run efficiently. We want to, you know, gain muscle efficiently, you know. So if I'm here, right? Right now, watch, the weight can move a couple ways. Watch, right, right now, they've already, I've already shortened it, right? They've moved already. The weights went from there to here. And then now I'm bracing from here, right? And now I'm doing, right? Now from here, because my traps are engaged so much and I'm bending my arms, the majority of this, this exercise is being placed on my biceps. My biceps and my traps are doing an insane job of, of creating leverage. Like getting behind this weight, like I can give an example. Your body doesn't want to train efficiently, right? If, if you let your body do what it needs to do, when you pick something up, it's going to find the best way to get it up in terms of like, you know, strength, right? If you're not already trained, it's going to bring your body every which way to pull this thing up. It's going to make it look like Gollum. <laughs> Whatever, right? Precious. Right, so here's, this is heavy weight, right? This is seven and I can do seven from here. Like, all right, so like right now, if I try to do this with good form from here, all because we want to be like from here, the goal is to make sure this arm comes all the way right here to midline. We want to come to here, right? For me to be able to achieve that with a heavy ass weight right now, right now, this is hard, right? Now look what's happening already, my traps, they're starting to come on right away to, to help me out, right? My body right away is gonna be like, you can't do this with good form, so let me just bring traps to the party. Look at that, now biceps. Now, now I can pull it in, right? Unfortunately, I got a massive bicep pump, my traps are juicy as hell, and my chest feels nothing. When we're doing this, any cable fly, it's gonna be, you want to position yourself in a place where if you're either staggered or, you know, just an athletic position, lean here from here. We want the, we want the arms basically to come to here, straight, right? And then down, back, bending elbows a bit, right? Stretching the chest. And then that front delt and the pec minor are going to help pull this thing straight up. You're getting adduction of the shoulder and then you're getting flexion of the shoulder at the same time and going in this pathway. He's doing this or this. That's how we want to finish. Doing it like this, right? Look how much we left on the table for, it's a good pose at the end of a uh, sick. But unfortunately, look how much room we've left to do the full range of motion. The full range is when this arm here comes from here all the way to here. If we've bent our arms, we've missed that much. So think if you're, how many reps until you get a big ass chest and it's like, you know, it's based on a full range, it's gonna take you double the time to get there because you're doing half the amount of work doing this. So don't do that. Do like I just said, do it. Do what I say do, because the only thing I really do is, is a good form. If you do exactly what I say do when you train, you're gonna benefit 100%, promise you that. Okay, so we got a bicep, an inclined bicep curl holding one dumbbell up and the other one down. I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on this. So look, when you're doing bicep curls, anything like, it might seem like a cool idea to, to, to do like, bam, and then one is doing this, and then one does this. And again, if you're gonna do alternating, just change where you start. Do it like this, one, two. And then this arm stays in a stretched position where it's gonna, Get the most amount of muscle crewman. Drink up, ladies and gentlemen, drink up. Anyway, so doing this and holding it here, you're missing the mark. So whether you're doing it incline, standing, seated without an incline or whatever it is, it's best that you just go from one side, start from here, up and stretch and stretch. Or to make it even easier, just do one at a time, both sides. The more you make yourself think, doing reps or doing an exercise, the more, the more you make yourself think doing an exercise, in terms of like, 
it being difficult, like adding a bunch of nuances to just a rep, it slows down your ability to actually grow. Your, your body has to go through a process of understanding how to move and, and grow. It's not gonna be like, I don't know how to move. And then, you know, when you're a baby or like a baby deer or like a kid, it's gotta develop muscle first, right? It's gotta, but it's gotta to to learn these neurological pathways first before it can just get up and be like, hey, what's going on, man? We're walking around. Babies are sitting there crawling first, the legs ain't really working. They're just, he's kind of like, just doing this, like, just, just. Like, if you sit like as a baby, you get, you're bored, you're, you're, and you leave for a couple minutes, that's a wrap. Your baby's like this. <laughs> Daddy, right? So he's gotta sit here and be like, first he's gotta be like, ah. He's doing this a couple times. <laughs> All of a sudden, the baby, the baby can pick his, his head up. He's like, oh, look, I, I can do this, all right? And this, but I had to learn how to turn those muscles on first. It's not like all of a sudden, massive muscles in those muscles and waking up, because the baby would end up being like this, like, I don't know how to work these muscles, just, I got a big ass neck and it's doing this kind of shit. So the point is, your body's gonna go through a process of learning first before it can actually start putting on muscle. So the more difficult the movement or exercise is, like, in terms of like, you gotta do like, you gotta think about, all right, I gotta do four reps on this side, then I gotta hold the weight up this way, stand on one toe on the other side, and then do the other side on this side, and then you're, your body's like, what in the fuck, can I just do a rep? So it's just better you just keep it simple, stick to the basics, hold the weight at the bottom, we're gonna get the most out of muscle recruitment, drink up, and that's it. Right, all the, all the body language she's doing, like all the, uh, dude, all this stuff here is, it's, I see it all the time. It's just the body's way of assisting with the lift. It's all it's doing. If you see people like, uh, why are they doing this? It's because they probably got used to their body being like, yo, let me help you out with this heavy ass weight that you're not ready for. But since we're gonna do it, come on traps, come on lats, come on back, come on, bring it all in guys, Let's bring it to the parties. And then all of a sudden now you're strong at this range. And then as soon as some bloke like me comes by and is like, hey man, this child is full range of motion. And you're like, wait a second, full range. And you're like, this is heavy as shit. This is half the weight I've been using all the time. So yeah, it's because it's because like 17 different muscles were using that one weight. Now it's like three muscles are using that weight. Okay, so then we were doing. Long arm. Woo! All right, so this is what I'm saying. These are one of those things I'm talking about. Okay. Sorry, we have a combined bent over rear delt fly with a one arm dumbbell curl. So just exactly what we were just talking about. Like, putting those things together, it's like, why? It's like, if you're pressed on time, just do one first and do the next. Like, think about it. If you're doing like, you know, 20 reps of doing this and then this, right? If you got 10 reps each arm or like each movement, it's gonna be better if you just did 10 regular and then arrested it up and then you did 10 to side. So, just demonstrate without using anything. We have this and then this, all right? So there's a bunch of things wrong with this right now. Number one, again, we don't need to do two different movements, right? It's just, it's just not the best for muscle recruitment. Anyway, again, let's sit right on the first exercise. This is good, right, if there's a load on this, right? So unfortunately, at the bottom of this right now, there ain't nothing happened. I'm just kind of holding it here, right? And the only thing really starts to happen is if I start really pulling. So at the bottom of like a, a rep like this, if you're doing dumbbells, it's good to kind of like just stretch yourself out of it, like stretch your arm while you're pulling in front of you and then pull up and then down. Now when you're doing these side delts, your goal is to let your scaps relax. If you want their delts to really work, don't have your scaps retracted right now because what's working here? Rhomboids, traps, doing most of the work. This is. Hardly any of this is delts. I'll show you why, watch. I can do this, I'm holding with traps and delts. If I do it right, that's about as far I'm going, I can't hold it up. So we wanna have this weight where our shoulders down, right, our scaps protracted, and then we're reaching, we're doing this like swoop, like we're trying to reach the furthest point of the entire room. I'm not trying to lift this up like this. People think too much of lift the weight up. I'm thinking about pushing my, thinking of my finger, and if I had a laser pointer, it would be stretching my arm in the direction of the pointer the entire way, right? Not at any point do I want this to be doing this the, all, the, all the way up. We can get to here and, and squeeze at the top, it's fine. So I'm pointing away out. If you do this, do this honestly, taking it like this, point away, push your arm away, then keep pushing away while you're pulling up. 
and you'll feel at this point here, your delt firing right off. Like point away, like do this. Think of this movement or motion when you're doing a bent over row, a bent over reverse dumbbell fly for delts. Anyway, I'm gonna stop right there. Hope you guys took some cues from this video and can help optimize your training. If you're having trouble putting your own training together, grab my, grab my ebook, the ultimate push bike training ebook has a lot of exercise in it as well as a beginning, intermediate and advanced training program in there as well, covering push pull legs. Whoever else you want me to see do a walking head coaching up, let me know in the comment section below. As soon as that name's there, I will do it ASAP. And I'll give you a shout out as well too. Anyway, till next time, you guys know how it is. Iron sharp as iron, progressive overload your life. In the meantime, keep you chasing.